Okay, welcome back. As I described in the introduction, the link to the image I used for my Cricut sign plotter will be in the description of this video. We're gonna do Iron Man's chest piece. It's on a five by seven black canvas board. You can use this um, plotter image on anything you would like on paper, um, any hard substrate tile, anything you, you uh, prefer. I masked it all off so I wouldn't get overspray on the parts of the canvas that I don't want paint to go. But this is a simple image to do. Um, inside is just glowing blue and that's a real bright highlight in the middle. So it's just gonna be a layering of white and blue and it'll be real simple and it's fun to do. I use all uh, Wicked paints, especially for something like this, a Wicked Opaque Cream to block it in. But super simple, fun, quick to do, and it lets you explore other options besides paper templates and stuff like that. So we're gonna start by just going in, and you don't wanna flood it even though you got a nice template on here. It's not going anywhere. It's it's vinyl. It's stuck to the canvas. You still want to take your time and layer it up appropriately. And get in the habit too, even if you're using a template that is made out of vinyl or it's a straight um, stencil that you buy from a company, try to still stay in between the lines. Don't, don't get into the habit of feeling really comfortable and just hosing it down, which I could just make passes all the way down because I know this, the vinyl's there. You want to get in the habit of going in between the lines as best as possible. You know, you're always going to have overspray, but you don't want to get in the habit of just hosing stuff down because if you're working with a paper template or you draw something on, you start to get a little bit more advanced and you take a pencil and you sketch this on, you're going to be so used to having basically a safeguard that you're not going to be used to just do that one little area. So that's just food for thought. And as always, I'm using my GSI Creos from Mr. Hobby 289 with a 0.2 needle. I have a conversion on this and my trigger happy grips because I death grip my airbrush. So this is ergonomically designed and it helps you a ton. I don't have any more stress or pain in my hand. So we're literally just dusting in this right here. Like I said, try this even though you have the template there. Try to stay in between the lines but the template's not there. As best as you can. It'll teach you trigger control. It'll teach you Overall self-control, good habits early is always a good thing. We just want to register these marks. Very lightly. Because we are going to put a fine light blue in around the areas. And then we're going to go in with a really opaque white and brighten it up. So it gives that illusion of how his chest piece looks. Uh, the description of this video will be a link to this photo that you can cut on a 
any sign cutter plotter if you use cameo silhouette um, US sign cutter desktop cutters any plotter it'll work in any plotter and for some reason if you're having a problem just comment in my video and I'll send you a ready to cut file no problem And just have fun with it. You can make this any size you would like. I just had a bunch of 5x7 black canvases laying around. And I figure I'd use them. I did this piece uh, last night. And it came out pretty cool. So I figured I'd do a tutorial on how to use a final cutter. A simple way to get you started. What I like to do is I like to go around and make sure everyone is at the saturation that I prefer before I go into the middle. That way I can match up the surroundings to the middle. This is just our base coat. You still want to take your time and layer it. That way you get that glow effect. Really softly and gently and practice your trigger control and your patient. Like obviously you can you can hit the top edge. Like I right here I'm gonna run when I run in here now to do this one, I will hit the top edge a little bit of the stencil. But you just don't want to cover it down. That's your first instinct. It's just to hose it all in, which in this case it would work. But like I said, get get used to practicing good habits that way later down the line you don't have a problem What helps me uh, concentrate and kind of get in the groove too. So I like to play music when I'm uh, painting 
Okay, so it's a good thing to do. It can be a beat music, whatever gets you in, in the groove and lets you have the most amount of fun. But for my tutorials, I don't use music because I don't want to be obnoxious and plus I want to narrate a little bit as I can do. And always air is on and you can release paint just work it nice and even coat always leave the air on for using really thick pigmented paints the more you keep the air on, the less you are to have tip dry. And it's a good habit to get into. So air on, pull back the paint, shut paint off, and always leave your air on. I can practice that enough myself. And that's why I appreciate it so much because that was my biggest thing. I was using the airbrush like a spray paint can when I first started, and that's not very helpful and can be a really bad habit to get into. I started off with a master airbrush seven months ago. And I still have the same $25 compressor. I'm going to be updating my compressor in about three weeks. That way you won't hear it in the videos no more. And we're going to go inside here and do some more layers. and smooth soft layers on any project that you do you get a more refined piece and you can see how by me going in here in this area and using this edge you do get a little overspray in the middle see how the middle is starting to get a little white it's okay for this piece that's okay if I, if I wanted to do this, if this was going to be like a jewel, like red or gold or a real stark purple, I would mask this part off just to be safe from the overspray. Now we'll go in the middle and we'll use this side of the masking. I'll hit it here and let the overspray go in and let the overspray work for me to establish the triangle and then I'll go light layers across and cover it up. See how the overspray travels up? And travels down. Now it goes to the center. Keep the air around. Make sure everything's thoroughly dry.
like that. Now I'll rinse out my cup, which I do with a little soap and water, and I rinse it off and off the side into a bucket. And then we're gonna switch over to the blue. I'm gonna start putting the blues in, and then we'll do bright white highlights. Now on this piece right here, I'm not gonna get too photorealistic with it, but the outside edges right through here are blue and you get a little blue hue coming just around here and then the center will throw a little blue in and then we'll go ahead and highlight everything out and then we'll take it off it'll be look like it's glowing it'll be a pretty cool effect so if you're new and you want to know, you just rinsed your brush out, you can test off to the side, make sure the blue's flowing, you know, all the water comes out first, and you have water trapped in there. Now we got the blue flowing nice. Now we're just gonna use the template as our guide. We'll let the overspray work for us. Once again, working light layers. You can always add paint, but removing it is really not an option. Unless you're working on synthetic paper, then you can use scratch methods or erasing type methods. But when you're working on canvases, you still can use them same methods, but they don't work as good. So just get in the habit of practicing real light layers. You don't have to do it in the colors I'm doing it. Use your creativity. You know, if you want to do the old school version where it was red and gold and stuff like that, you can. I'm just going off of the photo reference. Nice fine layers. Like that. Now that we have that blued in around, we just we want some blue still in there, but we want to fade it down. So I'm gonna stay farther away. I'm gonna establish a point and then work back and forth so it just dusts over. Just so see the white through, but you'll see a little blue. Like that. So you see, you can see the white peeking through but you still got that blue fade coming each way now this one we're just gonna 
run a line to the center. So there's a little bit of white showing on that side, a little bit of white showing on this side. center piece we're just going to do the edges go around and hit our edges one more time Make all the saturation match as best as we can. I'm going to do is I'm going to layer in a little bit, just fog in a little bit of the blue into the center. For a reference point for my glow is going to be. And I'm going to line these edges out. And really line these edges out here. Before I go in with the white, it's my my preference, I see something I want to try. Now I'm going to take my Wicked Praytex Colors Wicked Gloss White. And if you want to know, it's um, code W017, Wicked Gloss White. This is their one of their newest uh, paints out. And it's really, really fantastic. Make sure you shake your paints really good. And now we'll make this glow. You see what I'm doing is a big dot to start with. So if you watch my other videos, you can do small dots and big dots. So moving out to the side and at the same time covering up the edges. But I want the hot spot to be right in the middle. Give that nice glow effect. And the same through here. I'm going to run a line. Once I establish the line, I'll back up a little bit. that you want to leave some blue showing so it looks like it's really glowing
paint a little bit better. Get these lines of full saturation. And the other parts just have really just a dusting over the blue. We're gonna let that dry up for a second. And give a little bit of underglow here. What I'm doing is I'm fading the white down and then I'm giving it a big dot. Called the hot spots. And as they dry, because you can't let them be, they'll, shoot, they'll register real good, but they won't be able to follow. Now what we'll do is we'll throw a little bit of blue in with our white and add some, some little of our own flair. I think like a baby blue color. I will unmask it. And that's how it come up. So we got Iron Man chest piece.
It's nice and glowing, easy to do. Another thing you can do is you can do it freehand and just dust the edges so where it's bright, bright, bright blue, you can knock them back. Like that. To get a, more of a shadowed effect. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to do the Iron Man chess piece. Very simple. The link will be in the description of the video. You can download this image.